In Myanmar, the forgotten coup has become the new way of life. People live in fear of persecution. Protesters are arrested or worse. And political leaders are condemned to jail. The latest target is Aung San Suu Kyi. She's been sentenced to two years in jail. It was initially four years, but the military gave her a partial pardon. The judges may have read the verdict, but we know who wrote it. The army. Aung San Suu Kyi was found guilty of two charges. One is inciting dissent and two, breaking COVID norms. Can you believe it? Two years in jail. And this is just the start of Suu Kyi's troubles, you could say. She has 11 charges against her. They include several counts of corruption and violation of the Official Secrets Act. They're all bogus charges, but the military doesn't care. They want Suu Kyi out of the picture. And how will they do that? With sham trials like this one. If more charges are upheld, Suu Kyi could be in jail for life. That means no more opposition, no more experimenting with democracy, a free road to power for the army. What is the international community doing about this? What they did back in February when the coup happened? What they do everywhere, every time, big statements of condemnation. The European Union says the trial was quote-unquote politically motivated. Britain says the Myanmar army is quote-unquote suppressing de uh, democracy. Talk about stating the obvious. The Human Rights Watch is expecting more such trials. They think the army will pile on the charges until Aung San Suu Kyi dies in detention. Listen to this. Uh, they can't beat her in a democratic election, so they've decided to have a coup and to use a uh, kangaroo court, you know, uh, uh, in a judicial system that has been doing the bidding of the military for more than five decades uh, to lock her away. Uh, we, I don't expect that we're ever going to see her again as a, as a politician in Myanmar. I think that they're going to continue to pile charges on her uh, so that she essentially dies in detention. So is this the end of the road for Suu Kyi? Will she live out her life in jail? We don't know at this point. We don't even know where Suu Kyi is being held. It's all a secret. What we do know is the army's cruelty. They've arrested 10,600 people since February. 10,600. More than 1,300 people have died protesting in Myanmar, including five people on Sunday. This incident happened in Yangon. A flash mob was organized against the February coup. Do you know how the army responded? Look at the images. By ramming a truck into the protesters. I know these pictures are horrifying, but they must be shown. Here you have a group of protesters organizing a flash mob. Nothing violent. And all of a sudden this happens. A truck rams into them at full speed. This is the reality of Myanmar's military rule. The people hate it. The international community hates it. So how exactly are they still in power? Because some so-called superpowers support them countries like China. On Monday, Beijing spokesman was asked about Suu Kyi's verdict. Listen closely to the reply. As a friendly neighbor of Myanmar, we sincerely hope that all parties in the country will bear in mind the long-term interests of Myanmar, narrow differences and carry on the hard-won democratic transition process that suits Myanmar's national condition under the framework of the constitution and law. There was no criticism, no condemnation, just vague words on hard-fought democratic transition. The fact is China has already embraced the military junta. In August, they handed over $6 million to the army. It was supposed to be development aid, but nobody should, knows how it was spent. Another example is Cambodia. Their Prime Minister wants to invite the military leaders of Myanmar to ASEAN. So you have some countries offering money and others offering recognition, basically everything the military junta wants. And this is precisely why the coup could not be reversed, because there is no leverage. Countries like Myanmar have a culture of coups. Their armies are used to power and their politicians usually play along. Think back to Suu Kyi's testimony at the International Court of Justice. She defended the genocide of Rohingya refugees. She defended the Myanmar army and its generals. And the same army had detained her for 15 years. She defended them. What's happening in Myanmar 
is a series of mistakes, first by the power-hungry generals, then the greedy politicians, and finally the ignorant international community. In the end, it's only the people who suffer, always. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.